Hello, I'm Jerford K. Horcrims. And these are all the same people who were here before. Oh, what an absolute pleasure it is. Now, it, it wouldn't be Table Talk um, without a live version of a document that I received from Melissa oh. <laughs> that I will now read from in its entirety. Everybody buckle up. Uh, no, I, I, we like to tease Alyssa, but that's only because Alyssa is in Australia and we have a heart, you know, we, uh -huh. that's our dynamic. That's like a normal, but we have to, we have to turn it up just so that it can be felt at range. Who's teasing um, Alyssa? Yeah, teasing no one's you. teasing Alyssa. This is about you yeah, and we your tease problems. You. Yeah, we have a, we have a unique dynamic. All right, no. <laughs> you, um, you, wait, you thought this was about Alyssa the whole time? <laughs> number one. No, you suck. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The carrier uh, pigeon came for you. What? You made an enemy of the birds, my friend. No, number one. <laughs> uh, Jerry, announce Idle Champions code giveaway. We are giving away another big Kathris bundle. And this is the size of it. Be, be, Honestly, be if like I was it. to try to actually measure it, I couldn't fit it into this window because it's actually this big. That big? Um, yeah. It's the Kathris bundle featuring an unlock for Kathris Draub, uh, who I know is a fan favorite character. 42 uh, in the game, in the game. Uh, 42 Kathris gold chests and an exclusive golden epic right now. Get active in chat. So put them in there. Put in those. That's put a in lot. those. Put in those emoji. Too much. Is that too many? Yeah. Um, now, there's obviously. It's, it's opulent. And it's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. I'll be well, honestly, first. it's immoral. It's wrong. <laughs> and I won't be party to it, yes. except <laughs> I'm contractually obligated. Um, that's the only thing that's keeping me here because it's too much. It's too rich. It's too rich, if anything. Um, now, it should be established, firmly established. Uh, that we are holding another better advice panel at PAX West. Yes, yes, it's true. It's absolutely true. Um, but this time questions can be asked and this is gonna be, I mean, this is, this is a heavy load to bear for sure, but questions may be asked of our vast assortment of characters. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about like fully nine separate characters that can be asked. Plus all the NPCs, we get easily get us up into the hundreds. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. fit the number of characters is like probably like I don't know, like this, like this. The range wow. is substantial. Whoa. Yeah, um, it's but, not forty two, but but I mean it's pretty good. Uh, but listen, <laughs> that is on Monday, um, September sixth at one p.m. Pacific time. Uh, submit your problems in the form seen in chat. Uh, observe, observe very closely. Um, and of course, you can always just send us the questions uh, via the social media platform of your choice. Um, I have actually really enjoyed that panel generally. Do you remember the one that we did? Do you remember the one that we did in Australia? Where, What's Australia? No. It's a place. It's a, it's a, that's where Alyssa <laughs> is. They all get, they all get blended up in your old noggin, Jerry. Yeah. Jog, jog the memory. No, but it's, it's true. It's, it's, I mean, I wouldn't be able to actually fit it inside this panel, but it's quite <gasps> large as a landmass. It's, Wait, it's substantial. Yeah. I know that, I, mean, I think that they ended up releasing some part of it or the audio went online somehow, but there was, just, there, I don't know. It just, that one felt especially good to me. Um, but I, I love that particular show too. Um, Why? What was good about it? On Earth. <laughs> <laughs> no. Because there was, I don't, I don't know exactly why it happened. I don't know if it was like the result of a direct question or something like that, but that was one that Anna was there for. Yeah, and I so think I do know. Evelyn and, yeah, yeah, Kish, oh, obviously yes. in a tree. I do remember that one, yes, um, yes. No, 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 but Evelyn and Omen, it was basically like a date that we role played on the stage, which, I mean, that's a new experience for me, certainly. No, um, and Kate did a great job with that because she was like, "Well, she actually made it happen." You like yeah, pushed the like whole thing into existence. It. Yeah, that yeah. was God. where the best joke came from, which was like, "Oh yeah, my bag. There's so many things that could fit in it. My weapons, all these red flags." Yeah, exactly. I just started giving out the adding a sack of red flags. But listen, obviously, I've announced so many incredible things. I mean, where do we even begin? Obviously, the the Kathris pack from Idle Champs substantial, robust, immoral. I mean, that's up to you to decide. 
Um, Are we that's for it? that's for religious scholars to determine. But the craziest part, the part that might startle you the most, the part that might inspire you, um, is that our very own Kate Welch, <gasps> yes, will be the dungeon master of the Acquisitions Incorporated stage game on Friday evening. I cannot express the <laughs> full range the human body cannot perceive um the full range of my pleasure um at announcing this news i mean obviously kate and i have been playing this game forever years upon years upon years sure. um and i had a i had a chance to play with kate as the dungeon master with the uh mcelroy boys and their dad with whom i I mean, we developed an authentic, genuine dad relationship yeah. on stage. You and Clint McElroy were the yeah, easily the cuties. In it that was game. a dream daddy situation. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here to interrupt. Kate, I'm so glad you're DMing. About time. Also, give them absolute hell. Extreme. Extreme. As if I could do anything else. <laughs> also, give us XP. And items, if that's at all possible. If that, I mean, that's something I would like to see. Certainly as someone who's been playing that game for a decade, a level might be nice. No. Yeah, I could. I guess what I could do is like a Ryan Johnson, J.J. Abrams thing where like Jeremy Crawford has set up this plot and I just absolutely <laughs> fuck with it and make yeah. it uh, irretrievable <laughs> and then hand yes. it back to Jeremy and say, good luck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They'll bring him back in. Um, now, it should be firmly established also. No, this is item number three on the list. Um, mm. Next week has a change in schedule. Uh, we are joining the efforts um, in making online platforms more inclusive. This is specifically connected to uh, the issue of hate raids that happen on Twitch. Uh, and that means that we as a group, as a collective, uh, as performers, as a company, uh, we are honoring a day off Twitch next Wednesday. And uh, what that means for you is that uh, next week's show is actually going to air on Tuesday, August 31st at 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time instead. Uh, everything will hit the other channels that you expect the next day. Um, and so uh, you can, you're welcome to grab it then but we're not going to be on that platform on Wednesday for the reasons I've just described. Um, now, uh, this is the next section, but of course it has a very specific role for me in this. And I go through the player characters and ask them a very simple question. I'm going to start with still still. How are things at the hut? Oh, they couldn't be better. Um, I realized, I just realized literally now, as you said this, that I'm not in the normal location that I am. Oh, so, I don't know. I have no idea where you are. <laughs> you're in the curtains not, area. I'm not right? where I normally am, and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> am I broadcasting from a uh, Burger King bathroom? <laughs> no, I'll never tell. From your uh, secret bunker? I once yeah, got busy but, in one of those. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah exactly. <laughs> I have to keep muting because of the, the flushing. Um, so <laughs> get out of the Burger King bathroom. <laughs> that you, is the giveaway. You, strange man, get out of there. You've um, done enough. But that is that me? Is that this guy? I don't know who he's talking to. Um, there's a lot of strange guys in this bathroom. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh oh. The guys. <laughs> uh anyway yeah we're just here having a blast at the yum yum hut and uh time to to crown our new employee of the week it's uh a certain uh fella not who you think it is a, a new member this week more striking than lovely Ooh, yay oh, welcome wow. to the team get to work uh you're gonna get a name badge will it look like this index <laughs> card probably better uh, you can you can decide when you get it in the mail. Enjoy, enjoy. Now, as incredible a prop work. Sorry, exactly. Uh, yeah, 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 craft <laughs> services has gone beyond. Now, as a brief aside, let me now announce exclusively in this channel uh, the Level Up Dice Glyphic Blind Bag Giveaway. 
Now, oh. uh, obviously, get active in chat. Try to secure these bags for your own because Alyssa would not let me open them. Nope. They aren't. Now, obviously, there's a lot of footage. I would say there's at least by this point 20 full minutes of footage of me asking Alyssa if I can open these glyphic blind bags. I was like, maybe I could open them and keep them for myself. And she said, no. She said, <laughs> the first one sold out and these are quite rare. So you either have to buy them on their site or at the show. I did also suggest, yes, that I might eat a couple of them. My, they're made of some kind of mineral. No doubt the body requires it. Um, but it looks like a snack. It looks like a snack, just like everybody in it this, looks in like this a whole chat room, snack. obviously. But these the literally do look like a snack. Tide pod equivalent of dice. Yeah, basically. Anyway, I wanted them very badly, but what happened instead is that you get them. So, you know, enjoy that, certainly. Now, uh, Prism. Oh, uh, glad, glad we had a little respite there. Yeah, exactly. Little, little interruption between <laughs> uh, one and two. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. right. You might be wondering, hey, Ryan, why were you a little caught off guard there? Certainly not because I was looking at the itinerary and was like, what? <laughs> now, it let us firmly establish it. Now, Prism. Yes. Uh, have you been able to manifest anything from your vision board? Yes. Uh, well, my number one fan this week is, no surprise, only my fan would absolutely never be a fan of anyone else. And this is really important and it will come up later. Just kidding, it won't. Catherine Melky, you will be getting one of the fancy little mood rings. Uh, nice. and mine is dark blue right now. What does that mean? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> come up with it default. on your own. Happy default. Nothing. Numb. Um, and also you'll be getting my autograph, obviously. Uh, and you're the best. Continue. The riffraff. Absolutely. Now, it's been attendee. Um, have you seen any novel or interesting new characters at the gym. I was exiting gym and across the street is entrance to Prism Fan Club. <laughs> exiting Prism Fan Club uh, with sparkly ring, catch eye, ooh, glinting. None other than Catherine Melky. Really? And I say, I think I could engage in push-up contest with this one. Catherine Melky win. <laughs> um, but Catherine Melchie, Melky will be receiving oh green screening out one of these. Uh, this this constellation has no meaning for me. <laughs> uh, is is irrelevant to my plot line, but very pretty. I think you'll enjoy. It works now. Uh, first from the quiver. Uh, obviously, it's a it's a target rich environment. Um, have there been any especially novel or challenging targets this week? I have been following Miss Prism around to protect her as her bodyguard. And I've noticed that a, a certain person caught my eye hmm. as a, a person of interest. And this person is Catherine Milky. And of course, I, such a special individual, I say, you may be uh, the greatest target of my heart. And of course, as a, 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 a token of this, I have a meaningless uh, slip of paper that uh, <laughs> some weirdo made. And there is a, some kind of scratch that you get the one of. Wait, is it? I love that it would be cat scratches. <laughs> it's just he puts up the paper. Oh no, oh no, it's a meaningless piece of paper that a weirdo made. Oh man, listen, Congrats. Chris, but Chris in real life, that got a hold of me. That it really felt good coming me. out. I could tell it was strong. It seems strong. It seems strong. Now, uh, Cauldron Tippers. Cauldron Tipper. Oh. Whoa. Cauldron Tipper. Now, um, Cauldron Tipper, uh, Taranthosaurus, obviously, longtime ally, uh, vigorous supporter of the program. Thank you so much. Active in chat. I saw a lot of activity. Thank you so much. Now, uh, when I go to the next item, it is the poll result. Uh, and the poll result for what people were curious about is about the town of Maytha. Ooh. Now, uh, Maytha exists. So Maytha is an elvish word in D&D, &D, like in the D&D &D version of elvish. And it just means maybe. And so 
I liked the idea that because the, the 10 towns and like Icewind Dale, it's it's hard. It's hard living. It is very, very hard living up there. Um, as we are about to see, no doubt, no, uh, Ms. Welch. What? I mean, we are we are in the official, you know, Acquisitions Incorporated, you know, a game on stage run by yeah, you. Are. It's so nice. It's so nice that that's like one, two, pretty much everybody in this in this call is that's in that game. Yeah, I mean, no, it's, this is wait, 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 wait. Did we like? Did Ryan and I not know some like fucking pervert word that you said in some previous <laughs> game, and we like failed some tests, and we got put out the Willy Wonka back door? Whatever. You failed. You failed your check. I haven't invented the morally appropriate um, demise for you and Ryan, but yeah, I mean, you called it basically. It's something connected to how you're not good enough. Well, and um, yeah. anyway, it's coming, but- I know all um, the pervert words. Yeah, so. exactly, all the twisted shit. Um, uh, but yeah, exactly, that twist is, is fundamental to the brand. Um, but we are heading up to the prison, at least you know, in your adventure, at least this is what J Cross set up. We'll see how it goes. People, <laughs> people occasionally do break out of prisons. Um, so we are heading up to the uh, the authentically terrible prison called Revels End, and you know that it's bad because of the name. You can't mm -hmm. have any Revels in there. That mm -hmm. means that, that marks it as a terrible place. Leave them at the door. Exactly right. But occasionally. You know, when you are engaging in the DM task, yeah, um, you want to set up something that exists. I want to have something that's in a place that is defined so that people sort of know what it's about. Sure. But I also want to have enough leeway. I want to have enough of an opportunity to sort of stretch it out and invent things about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that if we need to come back there, I'm not actually stepping on any toes and I'm not uh, I'm not getting in the way of something that somebody might have already known because the, the Icewind Dale and the 10 towns are covered. I mean, pretty intently. There's a lot of content that covers them. And so I wanted the idea of a small elvish town mm -hmm. uh, named appropriately. Small enough that its economy could completely be dominated by acquisitions incorporated in a very, very small amount of time. So it's essentially the settlement that has been utterly captured economically by this grotesque new um, ownership of uh, Acquisitions Incorporated, uh, some grisly hybrid of these cloned omens from the Wandering Crypt and Portentia herself, uh, a, a place fragile, um, and tentative enough that they could seize it, um, but that I wouldn't be messing up any of the things that you had read in books or supplements. <laughs> um, yeah. I, wa I, I wanna make sure that I'm not messing with your imagination and your knowledge of that place when I establish a little place down here. If the players I, want more Maytha, or if they would need to go back and get resources, or if something should happen farther north, sure. um, there are opportunities for them to come back and get it. I just love the idea that the elves would name this tiny town, maybe. Like it, I love it, that that like canonic, canonically, it is called Ten Towns. It's like it's like well known Icewind Dale area called Ten Towns, and that yeah. means there's ten towns. And Jerry's like, I don't want to step on that. I'm just gonna make an eleventh. I'm gonna make an eleventh <laughs> town. Listen, that that is that is the dungeon master's art. Um, that's that's my um, it's yeah. it's my prerogative. Basically, I can do what I want to do, uh, for lack of a better term. Uh, now, I have winner call outs for all of these awesome codes. Are you ready? Ready. Uh, well, I love to see these new names out here. Idle Champions codes, Imperfect Mind, and Kicking Our Grass, heaps of Kathris bounty uh, hey. coming your way. Obviously, hey. keep, keep a close look on those messages to you. Elderwood Academy Dinar Scroll Rolling Tray. Now, I was actually in chat and I saw this happen and I congratulated them myself because they have been in there forever. But it is my great pleasure to announce that Splintersmith came mm. away with that great product. I am toot, toot. quite pleased with it. 
I mean, oh, we, yeah, the, great. the first time we ever saw it was today. We knew they were making something custom for you, but I mean, it's really, really cool. Um, and it's, it's special. Like you're the only one that has it like that balls out of control. Level up dice, glyphic blind bags, uh, Jandaru and Z. Now my suspicion is that they're from New Zealand. I can't prove it. Um, but that's the most robust connection with NZ um, that, that I can think of. And I have got great news um, because every week after this one, we can promise a completely custom piece um, for the Shadow Council every week. Um, it's super, super cool. Uh, we love working with Elderwood. Thank you so much. Now, uh, Tristan, would you be pleased to learn that MVP has been placed securely inside the official pronouncements. That's fascinating. I have no idea who Tristan is, but I'm very excited. Oh. No real names. Miss Prism. Okay? This is anonymous. Um, <laughs> the MVP, obviously, I'm making an executive call like I want to do. It's got to be that rang, right? It's got to be that B oh. rang. The boom. Yeah. Rang. No, the, oh, the boomerang. boomerang. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's she, gotta be. Yeah, she. I one. It was amazing, and I saw in chat when it came out. Everybody was like, "Yes, of course, yes, this is happening." Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, I have in my notes, like I wrote a note to myself that was like, "How did you know she would throw the boomerang?" Wait, is this whole thing? with the town like off the dome what's going on like just like a lot of bewildered things i was <laughs> yeah. really fixated on this boomerang the boomerang really pops off the rest of the stuff so it does it's pretty so, good so we sort of go and then we have a little bit more time you know in halver uh if we want it to investigate some of these concepts for sure um but my notes for that particular thing, if it's not too crazy, you know, to reveal, to ex reveal exclusively on this channel, um, uh, essentially, uh, particularly in this place, and then obviously connected to a direct conversation with Still about why are you trying to get in here? What are you trying to do? This, this party, so they're, they're ill-starred in a specific way that makes them dangerous to acquisitions incorporated. And part of it is that they are cloaked in a strange kind of luck. And mm -hmm. so I don't have specifics on my sheet for what that means, but I know. So I was basically just waiting for someone to act in a way that I could interpret through that lens. Mm. Right? Interesting. Very cool. Very so cool. I, I wanted to let I wanted to let the party drive it. But in this particular adventure, there's a few different ways it could go. In this particular adventure, uh, you could, things were gonna go very well. <laughs> and the, like I, I had a couple different scenarios that it could go, but I, I, like, I like to visit small towns in these games. That's one of my, that's like one of my DM things. Um, yeah, Boomerang, I feel like there's nobody voting against that. Um, I have next up, number eight, obviously, is the standard game discussion and question answering. Now, are there any more delicious notes, Prism, uh, in this document that you would like to share? Uh, I, I, I got it, notes. It didn't get an MVP mention because it's hard to mention it, but I got I got I got to shine a spotlight on Prism's performance of the old song. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah. It was so good it was so good it was so beautifully played and for the first time i feel like we get we we got a glimpse of what makes prism so um irresistible to her fan base like we've done some performances but we haven't like we haven't seen the true breadth of what prism is capable of and i like i i think i was watching the bot a little bit when it was yeah. when it was streaming and i was just like no, <gasps> just it completely. I was captivated by Prism, so yeah. It big, felt good, big. and the energy in the chat was big too. It, it's just, it was a really beautiful, it was a really beautiful scene, and I think it, it's like, 
it's also part of prism like expressing it creatively right inspirata it was very much about like building a brand and then like mm -hmm. once she gets out here to the countryside now she's she can like stretch her legs a little bit creatively it was okay. cool yeah it was, it was like beautiful. the first time kesha did her unplugged songs that's Ooh, what that yeah. was yeah oh, exactly yeah. it's it, you know what it was a real stripped down set real stripped down set <laughs> and when i say stripped down set i mean a set uh augmented with sorceries um, i did write some notes um just some this is a note for me about how to play prism and it's that her vibe is am uncomfortable when not about me oh like the bird <laughs> yes mm. um and then i have a note for you jerry that says why is everything a crab with you this is upsetting now listen car you know carcinization is a is a established phenomenon in biology right and true lots of creatures tend to become crabs that's not on me um, are you are you among their number? Is that what yes. you're saying you here? You are. Great. Yeah, that's Jerry's true self insert. Anytime there is <laughs> carapace. You ever seen a crab? It was me. Anyway, you you crab? moon on. Crab. <laughs> I was the crab. I got these notes in my scritch book. Okay. Then the last one I had was uh, still is so sweet and soft. That sword is all the way fucked up though. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Right, accurate. It's upsetting. I. They, I mean, like you do a good job. I know you were like, oh, I want to like the dichotomy of the sweet boy and the sword, but it's like, no, in the, well, ha in, yeah. in the hands of Jerry's narration, it's even worse. Well, and I, I would say, especially if you had a chance to see uh, some of the lore, which of course you can get any old time at act dash inc forward slash C team forward slash lore. Like you can get access to this, the unlocked lore later for sure. Um, but especially at the third tier, a lot of Still's lore got quite weird. <laughs> it stopped being sweet and cool. I, I, I hope this doesn't awaken anything me uh, in me as a dungeon master. Well, we'll see how it goes. Uh, oh, I have some uh, some questions and answers if you'd like to investigate those. Oh, uh, Tyranthosaurus, ancient ally hmm. uh, of the Grove, uh, fo following up uh, from the last table talk, how does the cast feel about publishing excerpts from their notebooks from playing at the table? In fact, if you look, I retweeted it myself. If you look at um, Ryan's feed, uh, Ryan occasionally does a little uh, sketch and doodle as well. And so there is a still uh, and the black sword uh, mm -hmm. sketch up there right now. But as, as far as how people feel about it individually, I mean, I, we don't all live on Twitter, at least currently, right? No, not all. Yeah, but most. Uh, I'm I'm okay with sharing it as long as I don't think it's going to give anything <laughs> away. You know, no. Unless I've I've also like at points have just been doodling. And I realize this is actually not related to anything. I think it's cool, and people might like to see it, but they shouldn't think that it's you know intrinsic to the game. So I don't. I my suspicion is that people would love it because I often look over there past you now. Kate, do you look also? Do I do I peep? Yeah, at, at the, at, at the sketchbook notebook. Oh yeah, constantly. Yeah, like anytime uh, there's there's got to be footage of me doing this at least a dozen times where I'm like, <laughs> cool. like I just do it on it on camera. I don't, it's yeah, it's it's absolutely it's it's a it's amazing. Honestly, there's so much content that y'all haven't gotten to see that I've gotten to see. Um, and that that goes for everybody in this in this call right now. Um, there's a there's a lot of good stuff in there, and you know, I, I think for the right for the right dollar amount, we could probably persuade Chris to to post that to investigate yeah, or anything really. Yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say as that as that financial contribution scales up, the impossible becomes possible. Yeah, all of a sudden, a lot of options. You know what I mean? It op <laughs> it it opens wide. Um, uh, Patrick Ling says, if Omen dies all of them naturally, who becomes CEO? That is a great question. And it's literally one we will investigate in this campaign. Uh, Catherine Melke, uh, a profound uh, supporter of the product. Uh, has there mm -hmm. been any thought about returning to the fully live streamed format before the season ends? I mean, currently that's not, currently that's not in the plan. Um, and I, I can 
at a future point, I can go into sort of why that is. Um, but we wanted to continue the campaign when we could actually be together physically and look at each other's faces. And we waited for that, but that would be quite, quite difficult um, to pull off for a variety of reasons, which I'm happy to go into uh, in the future, just not at this protect particular chrono it's Alyssa's, juncture. It's Alyssa's fault. Alyssa is bad. Alyssa's and... just really bad, <laughs> really evil, yeah, and like she, spiteful. It, Alyssa is she the big bad of this campaign. Didn't yeah. understand that Australia uh, Wednesday is not our Wednesday. So yeah, no. essentially, it's like look all over we the can place. Say you don't get three Wednesdays on a weekend. Like it isn't. That's not how time oh, ever worked. No. Here it comes. Here it comes. Look, we yes, can break the news. Alyssa released a viral pathogen that affected the world. Like, <laughs> it's time. The, it's time this <laughs> news broke. It's time the world. It's time the world knew. But yeah. uh, don't. But you don't. You can't blame her because it's just something that her body does. It's yeah. not like she was right. doing it on purpose. She's saying right. in chat right now. Wednesday was yesterday. This is. It's I gone know, too it's far. Really sad. Yeah. It's really sad. It's really what. That's it's some... nice. I, I'm I'm grateful that she held the pathogen in as long as she did. You know. Yeah. You know. I, yeah. I, credit to her, really. Right. Honestly, she's doing a great job. She's the real MVP. Um, <laughs> uh, junior C Hag, keep reaching for the stars. Um, what does the Centaur cold weather gear look like? Oh, thank you for asking. I think what what we had canonically discussed was there's not a lot in in terms of like gear that's custom made for centaurs that you could find in a murderous Off warehouse. The shelf. Right. Um so what what uh gets been cobbled together was mostly like horse blankets um and maybe what I what I imagine is like a shearling type bomber jacket for her nice. upper house. Oh so some mm. leather. Yeah definitely some leather. Cool. Um but but you know it's tight and it's probably like rolled up three quarters because yes. her you know she's she's a she's a beefy gal. So yeah we're we're working but there's not there's not like a whole now if somebody wants to design a winter line um <laughs> that that maybe we could we could talk to somebody in water deep about uh constructing for us. A clothier very open very open to it. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now uh the question I have here is also from Junior Sea Hag. So continue to reach even further toward the stars. <laughs> um, does the town of Maytha contain so small a population as to technically qualify as a Thorpe? Love the uh, callback. Thorpe. Love Actually, the Thorpe. callback. Yeah. So it's 10, 10 towns, one Thorpe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, we've all, we have all seen this notorious uh, online it's video. video. <laughs> um, it's, it, it took Rotten. over. Com. It took yeah. over a few summers ago. Um, <laughs> obviously, there's some exclusive video content. Um, uh, it is now my task uh, to thank our partners, Level Up Dice, Idol Champions, and Elderwood Academy uh, for supporting the program. Thank you so much to the revered Shadow Council. May our labors please you. Uh, can't wait to see you again next Tuesday um, at 4 p.m. Uh, don't miss it. Uh, we'll see you then. Tuesday.